Edriders is a not-for-profit enterprise. Our core business is building new methods and technology for computational social science. We use this to understand complex economic and social challenges and identify new ways to solve them. We work with a broad range of clients from large organizations like the World Bank to universities, all the way down to small startups. The team that manages all of this is very small and heavily relies on distributed remote work. We draw our collaborators from our online community of 6,000 members in 80 countries. This community includes people from every sector, discipline, industry, and level of seniority. To do this, we have developed our own practices, technologies, and culture. This has made EdgeWriters an organization that is resilient. Um, but most of all, it allows us freedom to shape our working life so that it suits our individual preferences and needs. Distributed work is about more than working from home during COVID. It is about how to use different digital tools in the right way, the right way to support better processes, working cultures, and norms. It's not as though everything was okay before COVID. Stress and burnouts, people working very long hours. And at the same time, we know that humans can do a maximum of four, between four and six hours of deep work a day. Let's say five. By deep work, we mean work that requires focused attention. So if we add this, it's around 100 hours a month. Currently, one third of that time is being wasted by inefficient meetings, email, and other attention grabbers. Think about what this means in money and think about what this means for well-being of staff that has to compensate for this lost work time by doing even more work and eating into the time they need to recover, rest, have a healthy work-life balance. It's a vicious cycle. So here's one example of what we did to help fix this issue in organizations. In 2019, the European Institute of Technology's unit Climate Kick asked us to help them with an issue of reducing their business travel, which was the main source of their carbon emissions. And because they knew that we were a remote first organization, they asked us to share our expertise with them. And what came out of this is a manual about basically all our organizational knowledge about distributed work containing communication, collaboration, socializing and organization building. Uh, but it requires people to already have some intermediate knowledge about the topic for this to be useful to them. Let's look in some more detail at what does not work. So most organizations that had to adopt remote working during the current pandemic, they did so intuitively, which means they take the processes and infrastructure they use offline and create the online equivalent of it. In most cases, that is not working out. It's a waste of time and money. For example, if you move all your meetings online to be Zoom meetings or other video calls or even worse video calls with uh, post-it notes, basically these organizations see distributed work as a constant dialogue, like being in a room together. But that is what causes you the interruptions. As part of this, for example, if you do not have uh, documentation of your organizational processes that is accessible to your collaborators, then the only way to learn about your organization is by new collaborators asking old-time collaborators, and that creates more interruptions. And then a last point that's a bit separate is a lot of organizations these days use rent tools or software as a service, but when you do that, you can hardly adapt your online collaboration processes. You can't really change them much. On top of that, using rented tools for critical purposes has uh, security and reliability implications. Here's an overview of the five areas that we identified as being critical for success in a distributed organization. First, communication, because when you're not precise and comprehensive in your communication, you create delays or interruptions in the future, or both. Collaboration, and we can't stress this enough that by default, try and head for asynchronous work. 
that means working in a different place and a different time, or having the freedom to work at different times. Socializing, because in a distributed organization it doesn't happen on its own anymore, but it is essential for team health and a frictionless communication. And tools, because even when you talk to each other in distributed teams, you use a tool. And finally, organization building, when you have the power to change more basic things around in your organization, use that power, because you can make it so much more efficient and enjoyable than the improvised work from home setup during the COVID pandemic. How to be an efficient distributed organization? But we found that the key technique for that is asynchronous work. In practical terms, when your collaborators have the freedom to choose their own work time and they are rarely interrupted by urgent demands or questions, that's a good indicator that you have an asynchronous work environment. The goal for a distributed organization is that you put in place a culture and a management framework that makes asynchronous work the default. Of course, not every organization can make that full transition to this model, but as you will see in a minute, even a few small changes can make a significant contribution to saving you time and money and mental strain. Some practical points from our organization Edge Riders about how we are an asynchronous organization. First thing, we give our collaborators a high degree of autonomy by making management minimally invasive and goal-oriented. Surveillance, on the other hand, is expensive and counterproductive. You don't really want to know the mouse position of your collaborators' mouse pointers it every time. Then documentation. We have organizational manuals about more or less everything that makes the onboarding process cheap, but documenting is a skill and it takes quite some education to get everybody to recognize that and contribute to it. Third, asynchronous work is the default. And fourth, that is enabled by making tasks easily done in parallel and switching between them comfortably and fast. That means when you get blocked, you just switch to another task and wait for your colleague to do their part so you get unblocked. And that is helped by communicating tasks, including their dependencies, and by tools that allow to express these dependencies. On that point, number five, tools. If you're happy with the tools you have, don't change a thing. But just don't let yourself be forced into tools that don't work for you. In our case, we decided that we would rather trade some polish for the freedom that is granted by free software because we can change much more to adapt the tools to our organization. If you are already working from home before COVID, it is easy to convince yourself that you already work in a distributed way, especially if you intentionally only do focus solo work at home. In practice, many of us are still operating in real-time office-first mode. So try this experiment for one day. Rate every meeting. Was this an effective use of your time? Could you have skipped it? How else could you have solved the challenge or met the objective of having the meeting in the first place? Do the same for every email. What percentage of these emails could you have avoided or solved the issue in some other way? And finally, ask yourself one question. How satisfied were you with your working day? Ask a colleague to do the same and compare notes. You will find that there are limitations to what one person can do, because no matter how well you can get your own team or organization to function internally, you will always end up doing what the person with the most power or the ability to veto things by just not adopting common practices wants. Also, there is no one size fits all. Not every organization can or should go all the way to becoming fully distributed. But even taking a few small steps in that direction can significantly save time, energy and money for everyone concerned. So how do we make it easier and better for different people, teams and organizations to adopt distributed collaboration practices.